and welcome. In this video, we're going to be checking out my good friend Kyle's brand new Alfa Romeo 4C. But, so I'm not just glamorizing it for the entire video, first let's talk about what's dumb. To start off, the front hood can't be opened even though that's where the windshield washer reservoir is. To access this, you'll need to remove four screws and then use a cheap Mopar branded, and I'm not kidding here, hose kit to add fluid so you can keep that window clean. Not being able to lift the front hood also means you're limited to the storage of the rear trunk, which is big enough to hold an iPhone and the hoses that you can use to add the washer fluid. Also under the rear hatch, you'll notice a fancy loop-de-loop -loop of the intake piping where there's seemingly no reason it couldn't just be a straight path from the intercooler to the throttle to help reduce turbo lag. There's no power steering, so parking is a bit of a workout for your arms, and adding to the difficulty is the fact that a Cadillac Escalade has a better turning circle. Again, not joking. Inside the cabin, rear visibility is terrible. The cup holder has not been Americanized, and there was no seating position where I could see the entire display, so I kept ducking my head to see what gear I was in or where the revs were at. Okay, so it's impractical. We get it. You probably knew that when you first saw a picture of it, but it's very different from anything else I've ever driven. And so to start off, I want to talk about the brakes. And it's there's very little travel to it. It's extremely uh, sensitive, and so there's not much travel to it, and you get into peak brakes braking without pushing it in much. It's very similar to, I got to try out a Formula One simulator uh, that Fernando and Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen, very similar to what they use. It was a $500,000 simulator. Uh, and basically, the brake pedal's just like a block, and you press your foot up against that block, and however much pressure you apply is how much braking you have. And it's very similar to that feel, and it's very different from everything else out on the road that I've experienced. It's much more so like a racing vehicle than a road car, as far as the brake pedal feel. And you really do have to work to drive this machine. I thought being a dual clutch transmission, you know, maybe it would take out some of the involvement. It's an extremely involved experience. You're not just gonna go, you know, relax and get groceries in it and think that you don't have to drive along the way. You have to put in effort the entire time. The steering, no power steering, uh, which is phenomenal. You have incredible sensitivity in it and it's extremely uh as far as the response so when you turn in it's immediate there's no lag in that at all you feel absolutely everything on the road and that's totally separate from anything else because there's zero aids coming in uh helping you we're just going to take this corner fast <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> enough talking about the brakes <laughs> extremely responsive with the power so you know even though it does have all those pipes uh, that I was showing earlier about the intercooling you really don't notice the turbo lag and um, when you do put it into the manual mode the downshifts are very quick uh, let's see I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so if your foot's on the brake you know it knows the logic it knows you're about to downshift and it's extremely quick to do it put your foot down you don't notice turbo lag I mean honestly it's really quick you get up to about 1.5 bar they put a comma in there because it's European uh, but you know regardless you're around 21.7 uh, PSI and extremely quick to respond once you put your foot down now I was looking at the power to weight ratio of this vehicle and it's not all that impressive it's good but for example a Nissan 370z actually has a better power to weight ratio but that doesn't tell the full story this thing's getting 80% of the torque available at just 1700 rpm thanks to the turbocharger and at 2200 rpm you're getting full torque 258 pound-feet and so you get a lot of torque early on and so you have a nice power curve and you've got great acceleration for the entire rpm range so another interesting thing, the rear suspension is a McPherson strut and it also has really long control arms. And I believe what that's for is, is that so when you hit bumps or go around a corner or anything like that, uh, it'll keep it so that the tire geometry doesn't change much with much elevation distance traveled with the tire. And I believe that's what it's for. And it's also pretty angled back. Um, so I believe that's anti-lift or anti-squat uh, so that when you're, you know, hard on the brakes or hard on the accelerator, it's not dipping back too much. And you really don't notice too much travel when, you know, you do put your foot down. <laughs> you just kind of smile and fly forward. 
So this does have the sport exhaust, so they've removed the muffler uh, and they charge you $500 to take out the muffler, which is kind of silly, but it does sound phenomenal. It's, it's all in your face. Um, if you don't want to hear the exhaust, you shouldn't get this option because that's pretty much what you hear constantly, but it's a beautiful thing. You get a lot of turbo sound as the induction uh, is right to the right of the passenger, um, so there's a little tube right there where you're pulling in air. And so you hear that turbocharger, especially if you're kind of mid-throttle and, and shifting, you know, around the 4,000 RPM range, you get a little bit of that turbo flutter, which you can hear, and it's pretty cool. So as far as dimensions on this car, it's the shortest in both length and height of any of the vehicles I've tested. So it's really short, really small vehicle, but it's actually really wide, and that's part of the reason for that large turning circle. It actually has a wider uh, front and rear track than a Nissan GTR, which is pretty hard to believe for something this small. And as far as the rear wheels, the rear tires are 235s, so actually pretty wide. That's the same width on a base Mustang and the base Mustang weighs over a thousand pounds more and that's the tread that it's using. So you've got some serious grip with those uh, wide rear tires in the back, slightly narrower in the front, 205s, uh, but plenty of grip with the tires in the corners. You know, all of that, a lot of that is attributable to this car just weighing so little. Basically the philosophy with this vehicle is to just take out all of the weight. It weighs less than 2,500 pounds, it's got a carbon fiber monocoque, extremely lightweight vehicle. And so it's kind of similar, uh, I'm not going to tell the boring story, but I just bought a bicycle recently. And so when I went to buy it, I was asking, you know, I only spent $600 on it, it's a hybrid bike, there's nothing special about it, uh, it does have hydraulic brakes, but besides the point. So I was asking about, you know, if I spent more than $600 on a hybrid bike, what would I be getting? And pretty much all they said was, you know, you're just going to get lighter components. You're not going to get, you know, nothing's going to be better about it. You're not going to find that, you know, the, the gears are going to last longer or anything like that. Basically, what they're just going to do is remove weight. And so that's kind of the same philosophy that this car takes is that, you know, they start with a really great base. You've got a nice, powerful engine. You've got a dual clutch transmission that shifts quick. Um, you know, you've got a very capable car. And so where do you put the money in? Well, you put the money in taking weight out from it. So you get these really nice nice, uh, you know, like the carbon fiber monocoque where you're pulling out so much weight, but that's a very expensive thing to do. And so that's the whole philosophy is just keeping it fun because lightweight is fun, like fact. And by removing all the weight and having a good powerful engine in there, it's just a phenomenal vehicle to drive. You take out power steering, that removes weight, and it gives you much better feedback when you're driving. So another benefit to it, I mean, it just gives it a pure raw driving experience. And that's so much what this is. Like there's there's nothing that's sugar-coated about it. It's an experience to drive it. It really is truly different from anything else I've driven in that because you have to be involved. You have to pay attention. The steering wheel snaps if you hit a good bump. You know, you gotta have your arms with some effort into them. And so it's, it's just totally different. It's a ton of fun. I think if I were to, you know, say, what does it make sense for someone to buy this car? Why, why should someone buy this? I think it's probably one of the best driver's cars that you could own as a second car. If you have two vehicles and this is going to be your second car and it's purely for driving, this is probably as good as it can get on public roads. It's phenomenally fun, but it doesn't just have a stupid amount of power that you can't ever use on public roads. You can make use of all the torque it has. And so, you know, lightweight package, really nimble, uh, extremely precise, everything about it, and all with plenty of power. It's insanely quick when you put your foot down. Very limited turbo lag. Honestly, just a phenomenal package overall. Been really impressed with driving it. Thank you so much, Kyle, for allowing me to do this. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And now a couple downshifts. nervous a little bit Kyle no, never <laughs> that's <old>. good <laughs> that is sweet <laughs> <laughs>